on, boys. Johnny Fraser. Oh, like, look at those ratings. 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.1. Our whole team's underperforming. But Fraser's on 6.1, so he's going to be the man to make way. We'll bring on McDade. And I'm still trying to work out how I'm going to cut this episode because we've looked genuinely had the last five minutes on camera. What's going on, guys? My name is Adam. I am a super swan. And welcome to Club 2, Episode 4 of the FM20 Campus to Champions. Yeah, we are top of the league. You, we are three points clear at the top of the league. So, uh, you could say things have been going pretty well for Glen Tora. I'm, uh, I'm a bit unsure how we really got there. I mean, obviously, I know we've got had some really good form. But it's just the teams around us, especially Lan, just don't seem to be playing as well as they should be. So, since you last left us, we have had a sea of green. We had those two games last time. And these are the games you've missed out on. The only defeats being Balin and Malad United in the cup third round, which I put out my second string team because the board didn't really care. And we did lose to Crusaders 3-2. A very disappointing defeat as well. But it was away from home. But other than that, we picked up wins against Warren Point Town, Belfast Celtic in the quarterfinal of the Country Antrim Shield, Newry City AFC, we hammered them 5-1. Tom Price, Johnny Fraser, Chuck Woody, and McDade getting involved in the action there. 3-1 win over Carrick Rangers. 4-1 win over Glenarvan. And a, the best result of them all, a 1-0 win over our rivals Linfield away from home in the league. So that was the that was the game I thought to myself, this this could be it. This could be the season that Glen Torren reach the top of the league. So we have come back today for another game against Linfield in the Country Antrim Shield semi-final. It's a neutral venue and I have a chance to reach a cup final if we do beat Linfield. So I thought we'd come back for that game before we go on a month hiatus and come back against Coleraine after the winter break. So, you know, this episode's going to span about a month of in-game time, but we will be showing off two games today. But yeah, that league table is very nice to look at. We have had some very good form in between. However, there is a negative that's going to come out of all of this. And you know how I was talking about last episode about our 60-year-old striker, Glenn Green, and how I think he's going to be leaving. Well, he's already got interest from Larn, which, you know, is to be expected. They are the TNS of the Northern Irish League. But more worrying, if I try offering him a new contract, he is not interested one bit in a new contract. He's got major reservations about negotiating terms. Doesn't even want to talk to me. So uh, that's a sign that he's going to be leaving in January. So it is a shame, as he has now become a four-and-a-half-star current ability player. He's our best player at the club, and he's been improving so much. I mean, it makes you wonder where this man's career is going to go to. And as we mentioned previously, he will be going on the shortlist of players we'll be monitoring during this save. But Glenn Green, we're going to enjoy him while we can, as inevitably he will be leaving in January. If, if I was to put any money on it, I would bet, I don't know, my wages of the season, I don't know. But Glenn Green is probably going to go. But... More importantly, we've got Linfield in the Country Antrim Shield. A place in the final is up for grabs. And this is going to be the team to hopefully get us into the final. Nissan's in goal. Thompson, Rooney, Lewis and McCann at the back. Sean Banks and Price in the middle. With Daniels, Chuck Woody and Fraser operating in those attacking positions. And of course, the 16-year-old striker, Glenn Green, is going to start up front. Oh, Something I also found out about Glenn Green. He's part Portuguese. So, you know, he could play for Ireland. He could play, uh, play for Northern Ireland. He could play for Portugal if he wants to. He, he could very well do. I'm also on his favourite personnel. So, you know, 60-year-old Glenn Green, you are you are the man at the club at the moment. You are carrying this team. You've scored 14 goals from 14 starts. And I'm going to enjoy you at this club for as long as I possibly can. But 
We've done enough talking. We're going to get into the Country Antrim Shield semi-final against Linfield. They are our arse rivals. We did just beat them in the league. So I'm hoping we can go out there and beat them in the cup. I'm going to say, I expect you to come back as the match as finalists. Glenn Green's motivated. He's up for it. The 60-year-old strike is like, yes, boss. We can do it. So it is Glenn Torren against Linfield. Neutral venue for a place in the Country Anthem Shield final. Seven minutes in. It's not looking good for us. We haven't had any shots, but 50-50 possession. Chuck Woody crossing the box. is ahead of the back post. Off the line. It's in the goal. It's a bit of a scramble. But Sean Banks is the man to get it in the back of the net. And we have started this game against our rivals 1-0 up. And there was a bit of a goal line scramble there. It was a missed header. Comes off everybody. But it's in the net, which is what's most important. We are 1-0 up. 13 minutes in, we start from the back. As Dean Rooney lumps it upfield. Tries to find Glenn Green, but it's intercepted. And now Baldy's in the box, but Rooney with the tackle. And that is a very important slide. As we start a counter-attack of our own. But Robinson does intercept. Both sides playing long balls today. They know how important this game is. The... The reputable country antrim shield as Lavery's in the box takes a shot. Nowhere near as it's still 1-0. 31 minutes in. Glen have had more of the shots on target. Linfield only had seven shots with only the one on target. I've got a sneeze. Right, okay, I've sneezed. It's fine. We're back where we were. So Jones plays the ball into McAllister. And it is Linfield on the attack here. Tries to cross it for ball day. He's put in the net. He's not offside, but I would say he looked very much offside in the build-up there. I'd be interested to see this one again, just to see where he is. So we start from when I sneezed, and that, that's what it was. I sneezed. That was what the cause of the goal was. But Callister crosses it in. Ah, he is onside. Bill Lewis was playing him on. Our eight-foot-tall monster played him onside. And oh, there we are. We'll have a better view of it here. We, well, yeah, look, you can see he is onside. He does well there, and Linfield are back in the game. Coming up to half-time, 1-1 is the score. And we do end the half with a free kick from Fraser. Whips it in, Banks on his own. Sean Banks has made it 2-1 before half-time. There was nobody marking him, and he took advantage of that. And we do find ourselves 2-1 up. Fraser whips it in, Banks loses his man. Lovely header from the Welsh centre midfielder, and that is up. Perfect time to end the half. Sean Banks is carrying this team right now. And I'm going to say, I'm happy with your performance so far. Keep it up. But I think there are some substitutions we do need to make. Tom Price, 6.4. I think we're going to move Sean Banks over to ball win midfielder. Bring John Chuckwoody back into box to box. And I think Robbie McDade's going to come in as the advanced playmaker. Glenn Green's also struggling, but with McDade now coming on, I'm going to give him 10, 15 minutes before I make any substitutions there. So we do go into the second half, 2-1 up, as we get ourselves to highlight straight away here, as Chuck Woody crosses it into Daniels, takes a shot, it's in the goal! I thought it was saved, but it's 3-1 to Glenn Tora. We've started off the second half with putting another goal past Linfield. And we are 3-1 up and marching our way to the Country Antrim Shield final. As the goalie does get a hand on to it. Not enough. And we are 3-1 up. 74 minutes. Stewart whips it in. Headed by Rooney. Only as far as Lavery. He's going to play it short to Dunlop. And now Linfield on the attack. He heads it down. It's off the post. Linfield almost got to go back. But the post was the only thing stopping them. From grabbing that second goal. Daniel's on the counter. It goes out. And I think now might be the time for another substitution. Glenn Green's brought it back a bit. 6.6. .6, although Neeson's on a 6.3. It's a good job with 3-1 up. But anybody looking tired? Fraser is looking a bit tired out there. So I think what we'll do. We've not got many options here for Morris. So McDade can move out to the right hand side. Oh, who have I got on the bench? Chris Gallagher can come on. So if I move maybe Chuck Woody back up to advanced playmaker and bring on Chris Gallagher, he can come in box to box. And I think we'll leave it like that with that for now. 14 minutes to go. We might as well see the rest of the game out together here. We have done a really good job. 
against Linfield. We beat them in the League 1-0. We're going to beat them in the Cup 3-1 if the way things stay the way they are. There is still three minutes to go, and Lavery's on his own. He's in the box. He puts it in the goal. It's 3-2. We need to, uh, you know, dial it back a bit, boys. Let's go a bit balanced here. We don't want to throw this game away. We've only got three minutes to go, and Lavery was on his own. The defence just kind of let him go there. And it was a good save. Well, it was a good shot, sorry. But, yeah, 3-2. Surely we can't throw this away. Surely not. No, I think that's it. That's going to be the end of the game. There we go. 3-2. So we did let him have a last-minute goal. But either way, I'm very happy we're going to be in the final. And the ball don't care about the counter Anthem Shield. You know, they're like, ah, it's not important. But it's important to me. I want to win a trophy with Glen Torren as we do win in the Belfast Big 2 derby. I love that name. The Big 2 derby as we win against Linfield to reach the final. Sean Banks, very impressive. You were superb. And if we... And ooh, the Northern Ireland boss is there as well. Michael O'Neill scouting the players. Oh, do we have a Northern Irish international in our team? But look at the competitions. That is the confirmation that we are in the final. It's going to be between us and Larne or Crusaders. We smashed the record attendance in the country Antrim Shield. I know we weren't uh, at home, but... You know, we've smashed the attendance of the country Antrim Shields. We are now the highest, which would, did used to be Ballymena United, but now it is Glentoran versus Linfield. We also know that it will be Glentoran against Larn in the country Antrim Shield final. So the big spenders Larn coming up against the plucky Glentoran, a team that previously, I've looked into the history, we used to be a massive side. We used to win all the time, win all the league titles. So Glentoran are a bit of an institute of Northern Ireland football. So it's going to be nice to go up against Glentlarn to restore us back to where we need to be. So we will be going up against Larn in the, I would imagine, the next episode because it's in January. So we will come back for the cup final. But now we go on hiatus for a month and we'll come back against, I think it's Coleraine. I think Coleraine? 23 days. Yeah, we've got cold rain, so we've got about a month to come back for. So, what could possibly go wrong in a month? Big development. The board have asked to meet me to discuss a new contract. We will attend the meeting. I think this is a fantastic idea. Yes, I will sign a new contract. So, they'll be offering me a new deal shortly. So, right, here we go. £800 they're offering me. Oh, that's a big increase. So, yeah, I'll show you the existing contract. £650 I was on before, and now they're offering me £800. Can I push them to 850 Can I be a bit cheeky and go, give me an extra £50? Oh, 800 825 Yes, they're going to give me £825. So that's going to give me a contract to the end of next season. So June 2024. And if we look at the five-year plan again, just to keep you all in the loop as to what the board's expecting, this year, they want mid-table, which we're top of the league, quarter-final the Irish Cup, which we haven't entered yet, the NFL Cup, which we don't care about, and the Country Anthem Shield, they don't really care, but we're in the final for that. And then it's become the best of the rest, qualify for Europa League, and then they don't expect a challenge for the title until another three years. So we are well ahead of the curve. I'm going to finalise the deal. And if we go on one more day, we'll have a confirmation that Super Swan has signed a new contract with Glen Torren. £825. That's a good deal. £200 price increase for me every month. And we've got a contract extension until 2024. It's all coming up, Millhouse, for Super Swan at Glen Torren. Welcome to December. We made it through the month. And uh, I thought I'd show you the finance screen because whilst we are very heavily in debt, I have managed to get the wage budget down. So we are now down to 7,718. The reason being is that I've renewed some of the contracts within the side that were expiring this season and some first team players. And I've managed to get most of them to 
accept lower wage budget. I'm not sure how I've done it, but they've accepted it. So that's fine. Because, you know, the money's going to me now because I've had a pay increase. So we have managed to get it down, which is really good news. I just need to tie down some of my other players, the likes of sort of Hoy maybe and Joe McCann, maybe extend his loan. Those are the only two. The rest of them, not so fussed on. But, you know, we're trying to get as many players tied down as we can. But we've made a call rain. And just to remind you of the league table, we are top of the league by three points. Call rain are in fourth place with 33. So if they beat us, they are well within the hunt for the title. So with that in mind, the lineup we're going for is as follows. We've got Neeson in goal. Thompson, Rooney, Lewis and McCann at the back. Banks and Price. Daniels, Chuck Woody Fraser, Glenn Green up front. I think it's pretty much the same lineup we had in the last game. Luckily enough, no major injuries, so we can name an unchanged side. And it does look like we are going to this game on form. Our best players available. And fingers crossed we can get all three points. We all call rain after what happened last time. I, I can't remember what happened last time. But we are going into this game against Cole Rain. Can we stay at the top of the league? And it's Mitchell starting things for Colrain to Millar to Beatty. Tries to play this striker, Nasari. Shevlin with a long shot, but it's in the net. And Neeson got a hand onto it, but he couldn't quite keep it out of the net. And two minutes in, we are already 1-0 down. It was a lovely shot, fair play, I can't complain. But the way the shot was thinking, I was like, oh, Neeson's got this. Neeson did not have it. But Shevlin, first time shot, an absolute rocket of a shot. It's in the net, and we're 1-0 down, two minutes in. Free kick, 12 minutes in. McCannon in the box. Shevlin's there, but McCann clears it away. Price to Fraser. We've got players up. We've got a player to the right of him, but Fraser beats him. He's on his own. Fraser with a shot. He should have used the men with him. There were men making the run. But it's good to see that we are sort of, you know, making some attacking movements here. 19 minutes in, we start with Cole Rain on the ball. And Beverland, can we close him down? We can, Daniels intercepts. Daniels now got players ahead of him. Chuck Woody's there. Is he going to go on his own? He does have a shot, but it's wide. Should have maybe used his other players, but it's still 1-0 to Cole Rain. 28 minutes, it's been mostly Glen Torren since they've scored. But we just haven't been able to put the ball in the back of the net. As Lewis tries to find Fraser, but it's not gone through. McKee now for Glen Torrent. Sorry for Colrain. We do win the ball back. Glenn Green, 16-year-old striker, beats his man. But he can't beat the goalkeeper. 1-0 still. Neeson, long ball up. I want to get a goal here before half-time. If we're going to have any chance of getting back into this game. Beatty for Colrain. Crosses it in. Rooney headers it away. Can McCann get there? He does. Right, come on now, boys. We've got players here ahead of you, Fraser. Long ball to find Daniels. He does find him. Comes inside. He's got some room. Again, wide of the goal. They're not tr using the men with them. They're trying to shoot on their own when they should be using the men in the box or making the runs. As we get a highlight here, trying the long ball again. It's been all Glen Torren as Glenn Green finds Daniels. He's on his own in the box again. And it's intercepted. That's a foul, though. And we are going to have a penalty. Who's our best penalty taker? I'm going to let Josh Daniels take it because I'm still a bit unsure on Tom Price taking penalties. But come on, boys. We can get back in the game here with a penalty. Josh Daniels takes it. It's in the net. And we do get that equaliser. Very lucky equaliser. But an equaliser nonetheless as Josh Daniels puts it in from the spot. And that will put us back into this game. In a game we've been dominating. But we've only now got the equaliser. 41 minutes. We're still in the kickoff highlight. Fraser now on the goal. Takes a shot. Nothing ever comes of it. So a kickoff highlight that went absolutely nowhere. As we get a goal kick 42 minutes in. We, it's been a very long highlight process. Yeah, I think uh, we've been on a highlight for about the last five minutes of real life time. But Daniels tries to find Chuck Woody. But it's intercepted. It's very back and forth. Both sides are getting into the final third. But nothing's coming of it. As Nan Nassari gets a goal. Just as I say, there's nothing coming of it. We worked hard to get the penalty to get back in the game. And now Cole Rain have gone 2-1 up in this game. Ugh, disappointing again. We worked so hard to get back in the game. But then uh, Cole Rain are taking their chances. This is what 
I think the difference is between the two sides. Cole Rain are taking the chances. We are not. We are dominating this game. But we just cannot get the ball in the back of the net. As is headed away again. Banks gets a try to Glenn Green. Back to Fraser. He's got Glean ahead of him. Not quite sure what that ball was. But Daniels does win it for Glenn Green. Boys, come on. So we're still in highlights. 44 minutes, another highlight. We've been in highlights for the last five, six minutes here. All crammed into the last five minutes of the first half. But Glenn Torren, 17 shots, seven on target. Two clear-cut chances, three half chances. We just can't. We've only scored one goal from the penalty spot. Glenn Green. Glenn Green, what are you doing? 45 minutes. It's another highlight. Oh, my word. How many highlights have we had in this last five minutes of the game? Incredible. Beatty now on the ball for Coleraine. Finds McKinnon. Crosses it for Beverland. He gets it in the box. Rooney has it away. And Chuck Woody to Daniels. Come on. Glenn Green's there. Doesn't use him. Gets tackled. And a long ball for Nassar. He's already scored two goals. He scored three. So, uh, right. Glenn Torren. We've been all over this game. We've had so many chances. Hit the side net in one-on-ones. But then Nassari seems to score every chance he gets. He beats his man. He's one-on-one. -on -one, and he puts it in the back of the net. And Cole Rayner, 3-1 up here. And we've had about 10 chances in the last five minutes. We finally get to half-time. And we've had a penalty and two goals from Nassari in the la in four minutes. I think we've actually watched the last four minutes of this game between us. But it's, it's, it's not a 3-1 game. It isn't a 3-1 game. I'm going to assertively say we all call rain after what happened last time. I'm going to say I'm not happy with your defensive work. I'm not happy with your finishing. But this isn't a 3-1 game. Come on, boys. Johnny Fraser, oh my, look at those ratings. 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.4, 6.1. Our whole team's underperforming. But Fraser's on 6.1, so he's going to be the man to make way. We'll bring on McDade. And I'm still trying to work out how I'm going to cut this episode because we've genuinely had the last five minutes on camera. But second half, we need to score two goals. As we get a goal kick, 53 minutes. A very highlight heavy... Whenever we have games on camera, the highlights are so many. I mean, we had the uh, the Larn game as we're 4-1 down. Nasari again. Nasari has scored every shot he's had in this game. But... When, when this is not a 4-1 game. Coleraine have been very clinical in their chances. They they have taken them. And the Sari especially, he has he's scored every touch he's had on the ball. Glen Torren haven't. It's now 4-1. 65 minutes. We've had 27 shots. 9 on target. 15 off target. 63% possession. You look at the stats and you'd think that we're winning 4-1. But uh, sadly, we're, we're losing 4-1. But it's not a 4-1 game. The boys have been unlucky. Chuck Woody's through. He's one-on-one. -on -one over the bar. Another chance we haven't scored. Corner for Coleraine. They'll probably score from this corner. They've scored from the corner. Yeah, it's it's 5 It's 5 one to Coleraine. I don't understand how. They've just scored every opportunity they've had in front of goal. We we haven't. That's been the difference. It's 5-1 to Coleraine. It's not a 5-1 game. 85 minutes. I, I'm just looking at the stats. Now, Coleraine have had shots, right? They have had shots, and they've had three clear-cut chances, and they've had five half chances. So it's not as if Coleraine haven't deserved their goals. But... It just seems that they've had a higher proportion of gone in. I mean, if you add the clear cut and the half chances together, they've had eight chances, scored five goals. We've had nine chances, scored one goal from a penalty, of all things, a penalty. So, Gorman's through again. At least it makes the save. So, you know, I'm not disputing Cole Rain's five goals here, but it just seems, oh, we're so unlucky. It's just luck, I think. And that's a foul, it's a free kick.
But, uh, yeah. I don't know how I'm going to edit this episode yet. Because there's six goals. There's loads of highlights to go through. So, who knows how this episode's going to end up. But, you know, you look, it's a fairly even game-ish. But look how many shots for both sides, mind. So, it's been a very entertaining game. But it's just that we've not had the chances, I think. But uh, I want to give a speech to say, you know... It was just unlucky. It wasn't to be. It was a nice to win, but it just wasn't to be. The team are happy. You know, I think they understand. So, a bit of a bizarre game to come back to. We lose 5-1, which makes you wonder, you know, that's a bit of a hammering. But in actual fact, it wasn't a 5-1 game. That, If anything, we played the better side. But Navi Nasari, right, hang on. I want to see how many shots Nasari had. Let's have a look. Stats. Cole Rain stats. David Nazari. How many shots did he have? Shoot in. Okay, he had six shots and he scored three of them. So, you know, he, he did miss chances, basically. But there we go. So we're still top of the league, though. We're still top of the league. That's fine. We're still top of the league. So five-star Cole Rain triumph. Yeah, they, they his team were lucky. You were lucky, Tom Mohan. You were lucky. But look at the league table. We are still top of the league after that 5-1 hammering. So, it's all good. It's still a bit tight up there. So, you know, still a few teams in that title race. But what we'll do is we'll come back for the cup final against Larn. And we'll play maybe Crusaders as well. Because I don't think we've played Crusaders on camera yet. Or we'll play Carrick Rangers. One of the two. But we will 100% come back for the Country Antrim Shield final against Larn. It's the money bag Larn against Colrain. Uh, not Colrain, Glentoran. Against Glentoran. We're Glentoran who are going to come back from the dead to win the Country Antrim Shield. But leave a like if you enjoy, guys. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Man 2020 content. We will be uploading Campus to Champions every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, 6pm GMT. And tune in next time as Glenn Torn have the chance to lift the Country Antrim Shield. Thank you very much for watching.